Happy Sunday, everybody. This is Leslie with Color Art. Uh, we're going to do some more ornaments uh, with the Primer Elements art pigments in the Vivid Clear Enamel. This is the ornament I did in the last video. I uh, experimented with taping off just a portion of the back and letting um, the ornament sit on the top of a salsa cup inside of a container here. So you see how I got to where I'm at. I had a few of these stacked and set the ornament on top of it. So can go in there. Why I stacked is I didn't want the sides to be touched so the color could dribble down each side. Uh, my first couple experiments with tape were a little bit of a failure. The paint leaked underneath the tape. This one, I just put a flat piece on the back. It leaked a little bit, but as I pulled it off, the tape was moist. I mean, the paint was moist, and I could wipe it off. But the sides, these really pretty sides, are pretty phenomenal. And, and I'm excited about the patterns. Um, one viewer suggested that I do a dirty pour in this side. And it's a little bit of a risk because you don't want to ruin the front. I really like how this piece turned out. These may not be traditional my colors, but hey, it's beautiful. Now, we'll be able to color the inside with uh, plain old iron oxide micas, like gold, copper, bronze. Um, I could take a little bit of PVA glue, uh, put glitter in it if you really want to get crazy, so the glitter would pop through the openings. A gold mica will give the colors like a glow coming through, and of course gold will pop through an area that you have open that's not painted. You do have an option to go in and touch these areas up if you find that, like this is a clear space here, if you can see all the way through to the table where my finger is, you can see my finger behind it. So, you know, this is an area that if I liked a certain inside color treatment, I could leave open and let that color pop through um, or touch it up, add a little bit more paint since I'm going to do the back anyway. Um, it's just one method. You can also just simply hang them. I've got a, an ornament on the front of our website. I did like a, I don't know, one minute short of just it hanging with the paint dripping. And it's beautiful. The paint dripping is gorgeous. This just gives us control freaks, and I'm one of them, an opportunity to feel like I have some sort of control over the pattern that's on my ornament. Now, I used squeeze bottles in the last video. Um, I like my squeeze bottles. I think the squeeze bottles give it control. However, no, not everybody needs this big of a bottle. Um, I mixed up this paint for a large swipe. I've got an hour video up doing this large floral swipe, and I mixed up these colors in advance. Um, one tip on getting plastic bottles, look for L-D-P-E, like Lynn, David, Paul, Everett. That is a softer plastic and makes it more squeezable. Not all the restaurants supply plastic bottles are L-D-P-E. They're a stiffer plastic and they're harder to squeeze if you're going to go for a larger size bottle. We've also had small bottles on our website, we, the one ounce bottles that we sell with the Vivid used to come with this top on it. We switched because I found I'm really rough on my stuff and I found that as, as many times as I open and close this thing, um, eventually the top broke down. But I like the detail that I can get. I can actually get dots with this stuff. And especially if you're dealing with ornaments and you've got an area that you just want to squeeze a little color across the top, you have way more control than trying to use a salsa tub and not pouring too much or even a pipette. I find that pipettes are handy. I use them mostly for my silicone treadmill oil or maybe just pulling color through. But taking the time to have to squeeze the paint up in the pipette and get it out is just so much more trouble. Um, <clears throat> you may have some squeeze bottles that you can use. And I decided this weekend um, I'll reorder more of these. We should have them up on the website in just a few days with these tops and we'll figure out a decent price, a fair price for half a dozen of them if you guys are interested in these because these are really, really super handy. Um, I keep them in a uh, 
sorry for getting off camera. I keep them in. I've already pulled off the ones I'm going to use for the video, the ones I want to refill or touch up. But this is just an old uh, plastic container. Some ginger snap cookies came in from Trader Joe's, and I just find it's really handy to put the bottles in to store them so I can move them around on my table. When they've sat for a while, I will um, take the time to pour them out and back into a salsa cup. Maybe refresh the silicone just a tad bit if I'm going to use silicone in them. And then, um, you know, once these do break down, like I said, I'm pretty rough on my stuff. I give it the good, the hardest treatment possible out there. Um, I will replace this. I haven't had to replace too many, but, you know, the fact that I had to replace just a couple made me change the tops on the Vivid enamel that we actually sell. Okay. Now I have a color love struck. This is my tape mark to make sure that I know that I'm in the camera here. Um, I've got my color love struck. I'm going to put some, because I want to keep my top clean, I'm going to put some placemats underneath this for right now. I get these paper placemats at Smart and Final, like a thousand of them for, I don't know, 20 bucks. We use these at trade shows so we can demonstrate tear it apart, throw it away, or sometimes these papers are so pretty you save them and use them as collage papers. But I mixed up, what I did is I, I uh, took all my paints that I've had from past projects that I had saved in these little salsa cups, refreshed them last night, restirred them last night, got all the mica lifted up from the bottom, added some fresh silicone or dimethicone, actually I used the dimethicone, that liquid dimethicone um, that you get in a lot of your facial products in these. So there, this morning I could just get up and start working on the video with y'all. This color red is called Love Struck. It just happened to be what I had mixed up. Um, any red will work, we have poppy red, we have hot cinnamon red. We have the love struck. Love struck's just a very, really deep, rich blood red color. And I'm just going to pour a little bit of this right into my squeeze bottle. I don't know how much you can catch this on the camera. See so if we can try it this way. So I'm just pouring it in. I can always refill it, but this gives me way more control, especially when I'm working on little projects. Um, like I said, I'll figure out a price on these things and bring them in. I know we have the one ounce bottles with the other tops, but we need more of these tops because they're really handy for decorative work. Um, <clears throat> So I want to do an ornament with red, I guess, obviously, I've done the love struck. Um, I have this jasmine pink, and what I'm going to do is actually mix it in the other jasmine I refreshed last night. I don't want to waste any paint. Um, this one, I added a little extra. Mica too, so it's very, very blingy. So I'm literally squeezing what I had in here out. Just try to get that mica up from the bottom because the mica does settle, mica's heavy. I have a little bamboo skewer if I want to kind of stir around and get it out. This isn't rocket science, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. A little goober off the top of this bottle. Mix that in. That's such a pretty pink. This is jasmine <clears throat> with a little bit of extra interference red in it just to make it pop more on the ornament. Um, interference red mica on our website we call it red pearl. Um, I'll go in more on micas in another video to explain what interference means. Let me get this dead center here. What interference means. Um, 
as the mica, well, quickly, as the mica hits the light, it interferes with what your eye sees. And for example, if I had eyeshadow on that had interference violet, you would see the violet of the eyeshadow before you see the color of the skin of my eye or the lid of my eyeball. Um, it interferes with the light. So that's, that's one of the beauties of our product. So I'm back and I've got this star-shaped ornament. A lot of us, including me, have found this ornament challenging. Uh, it's it's got the six side, the five sides to it. So trying to fill in medium all the way around and get color spread through here, wet color spread on the inside, has always been a challenge. This is the first time me trying to pour it on the outside. I'm just using what I have around, and I wish I had a little wider receptacle than this eight ounce salsa cup. But I'm going to try it. I have it sitting on a little plastic paint. I have. I keep paper plates and plastic plates around <clears throat> to use as palettes or drip or whatever. The stars come in their own box, individual boxes, with a plastic bag and the little hangy thingy on the top. The last one I had some of these lids stacked to stabilize it. I don't know if that's going to help lift it up. I'm going to try. That seems to be where it's not going to roll that much. <clears throat> okay, so I want some black. Let's see how far out we can get here. Just thinking real simple. Black, I've got that love struck red. Uh some gold that I had mixed up. This is solar gold. Now all of my paints have been mixed up with primary element art pigments, about an eighth of a teaspoon to one to two, one to two ounces of the clear medium. Um, I don't really use pouring medium much. If I do, it's Liquitex or GAC 800. Avoid Floetrol. Floetrol is not really good for sparkly paints. It has a tendency to mat it. Um, it's got a matting agent in it. So, you know, it, you don't even have, you can just put water in these for the ornaments, but just to let you know what my mix is, this bottle of gold, this bottle of black, I already have from a previous video, and I did a really big piece. I mentioned that earlier in this. Sorry to repeat myself. So, I'm just going to shake up what's in here. Let's hope they're still good. And when I was doing the um, other video, I s primed some color around the edges on the top and then did a little dirty pour in the center. So, I've got these little itty bitty Tiny salsa cups, they're a three quarter ounce. They're perfect. You don't have to fill them up all the way. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black, just a few drops of black. The black is the only color with no silicone. Okay, so we're getting messy already. I'm gonna put some of my some of my Love Struck Red that I put in my squeeze bottle. Put some gold in there. I want the red and gold to dominate. So this will be mostly red. But for grins and giggles, got me crazy, I'm going to throw a little bit of this hot pink in there just to shake things up. A few more drops of black, because black, as many of you know, dominates a lot of stuff. And the only opaque color I have in here is the black, and I don't want the black to overtake, and black has a tendency to overtake transparent colors. So being very modest with the black. 
We want this red and Christmassy. Actually, there's, I'm using so much of the paint in my squeeze bottles, I don't want to have to refill it just to do this video. A couple drops of black. More gold. Okay, I'm doing two just for insurance. Okay, now I'm going to give them one stir. There's a little silicone in there. All right, so I've got my colors over here. Got my ornament here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to taking the gold and kind of priming the outside, similar to a paint pour when you're filling in <clears throat> your negative space. Got some gold happening here. Put a little black because the black will resist the silicone in that gold. Let's see how much I can get on camera here so you can see. Never done this shape painting on the outside. This is the first you're seeing it live. So I like how it's starting to react in vein over here. I'm going to continue with the gold on the edges. I'm actually kind of putting it slightly inside so the black is more on the actual edge. So I have my two little dirty pores. And I don't know if I can get this in the camera. I'm going to try. And I'm going to use both of them. Pretty. Oh my god, that's gorgeous. <laughs> and see if I can get this where you guys can see me do this. So it's a little bit too straight pattern. So I'm going to add a little bit more red in here. pink in here. Okay, I know it's crazy. You're going to say, what? It's so red. Why are you adding the pink? And this is the first time doing this shape. So now I'm going to add a tiny bit of black. One drop. Oops. Now I add a tiny bit of black, one drop. Drop here. Drop here, 
interesting. Oh, the red is already starting to vein down into that pink. Gold is so cool compared to how red that is. I'm not sure how much I like that stark gold popping through. Sorry, I'm getting quiet. I'm just kind of experimenting with what kind of patterns I can get by drawing this paint down into that gold. I'm kind of liking that effect that I'm getting. Just taking the tip of the bamboo skewer. This looks a little blah right here. Probably have a tiny bit of pink. So, interesting. This is very interesting. Remember the colors are very transparent. Kind of liking this. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Look at the back. I just flipped it over. Let me see if I can get this to show up on a white surface. Look at the back of this thing. I just flipped it over. That is amazing. The front, of course, is very, you know, the black and the gold and the red. But the back, wow. Okay, I have a little hanger across the room. I'm going to have to show you how I'm hanging these on some PVC that I made these little cubes out of so I can hang them. I'm going to have to hang this. I'm not going to sit this because that pattern on the back is prettier than the pattern I poured on the front. Thank you guys for joining me. I'll be back in just a few minutes. Bye.